Hi and welcome everybody. Welcome, come on in. So it's Ruth here at artfulstampin.co.uk and I've got this really cute kind of pop-up, a 3D card, whatever you want to call it. I really like it because it looks super complicated but it's really not. I love projects like this because um, I'm not a big one for doing the whole complicated cuts in between folds and all that business. Um, I'm I'm in very much in awe of them when I see them on Pinterest and on people's blogs, but I'm all for easy. So I came across this and recently shared this card in a class uh, with some of my customers and they seem to enjoy it as well. So I'm going to make a similar card and just mix it up a bit with some of the papers. So I'm using the celebration papers that are completely free if you spend £45. Um, I can't remember the name of them but basically they are these ones with um, all these gorgeous kind of purple and calypso coral flowers they're really very luxurious color palette really really um yeah just lux luxury luxury okay so let's get started with the card base then so if you're using a4 card stock basically you need to cut a card base that is half kind of half an a4 piece of card stock so this is half of it and basically uh, 14 and a half centimetres. Now, if you're doing this in inches, you can do half a letter size, uh, eight and a half by 11, and, and just leave it at, at um, eight and a half, and then just cut it down to five and a half inches. You'll be fine. Right, so scoring, really, really easy. If you're doing this in metric, basically you score at five centimetres. If you're doing this in inches, do it at two, two inches. So, uh, two inches or five centimeters then seven and a half centimeters or three inches super easy and then you flip it around and you do exactly the same again so five centimeters seven and a half centimeters or two inches and three inches and, th and that's it that's all the scoring needed and so what we do is we pop that first, well, it's the second score actually, but we put that back and then do this one forward. And there, and there you have your card base done. Done and dusted. Now, I would recommend you do this in a lightish colour unless you want to put a, a white or very vanilla panel in the back for, for writing your sentiments or you, you know, your to and from. Um, I mean, yeah, go for a dark colour if you want to, but just know you have to do an extra layer i tend to make life easy for myself go for a light color base so the original one i use petal pink this one i'm using soft sea foam right now when it comes to cutting uh, your three panels um you've got a bit of wiggle room as to how how wide you do them i've done them four centimeters which is about one and a half inches so i need to, just need to grab some card to do that and i think i will use oh you see i fancied a bit of a change i wanted to see what it would look like with this background um so i'm just going to cut myself here a three and a half um what am i saying no three and a half centimeter strip and then i'm gonna cut myself some four centimeter panels but i'm just trying to decide what to do it in because this has got like a really lovely kind of like multi-tone colour to it. And um, let's see what it looks like. Ooh, maybe a bit of old olive. I think I'll grab that. Okay, so I had to grab a whole sheet. Never mind. So because I designed this for a class, uh, for those of you who do run classes and you want to do this uh in a class I tried to do it that the measurements were kind of like easy to get out of a whole sheet of cardstock so I basically cut my cardstock in half and then cut my matting layers from from that measurement and because I know that half a sheet of cardstock will fit into an envelope I was happy to do that so I cut myself three panels like that so four centimeters wide and ten and a half centimeters long and I'll just quickly show you how that works so that's just going to sit on onto there then I already cut my DSP which is going to sit beautifully then onto there 
So this one I need to cut at 10 centimetres. Okay, so I'm cutting these at 10 centimetres, which is just under four inches. So you could do these at four inches if you're um, using American sized paper because um, your paper would be four and a quarter. This would be four and a quarter. So that would work fine if that was four inches. Okay, so I've got my three, three panels there. Then I want something pretty to go in the background of here. So I'm just going to have a look at these papers again and see if there's anything that I would like to do that. Oh, I might go with a dramatic purple background. Let's try that one. So I'm just going to cut myself a length of this. And because I know that that panel at the back, this panel here is five centimetres, I'm going to cut this at four and a half. Uh, if you're using inches, do it at one and three quarter because this panel here measures two inches. And then I'm going to cut this at 14. I mean, there's a bit of wiggle room on the whole measurements thing anyway. So it might be worth if, you know, if you're new to kind of card making like this, make yourself up a dummy copy and then, you know, with some paper just to see how it all fits together. And then, you know, you can go from there and decide, you know, how, how you want to, to, to do it. But as I said, because I design for running classes, I'm always looking at the optimum way of cutting a piece of cardstock. So I don't have a lot of waste. OK, so next thing to do is stick these panels down onto here. So that's my little background. Now, you don't have to do this straight away, but I did find that this order of sticking is, is kind of easiest because once you get those the three panels that go in the middle on, it makes it a little tricky to stick everything down. So or to kind of like fiddle and get get your hands in there okay so that's that then i found it easier just to fold everything up uh, if you want to use a peg or something just to hold it together you can do actually i will i will do that just to help myself a little bit here although that's not holding to completely together oh, let's try that all right set you aside a second then stick all your matting and layering pieces so there should be a really nice fine border then all around your designer series paper and I just love the simplicity of this and looking forward to actually having a go maybe doing it with some other papers I was going to have a go maybe doing it with those spring papers the other freebie celebration papers um, because I think it would just have a whole different new look to it. So I might do that in a second. So I'm, this is, um, I've scheduled this to go live on Thursday because I'm actually not at home right now. Um, I'm away from home and I've got a Stampin' Up! meeting tomorrow. So um, rather than me worrying about going live and from my hotel room, I thought I'd, you know what, I'd just schedule this ready for you guys to enjoy. So thank you so much for coming and watching. If this is the first time you've actually watched any of my videos and you like what you see, please do hit that subscribe button. Okay, so I've closed everything down to stick on my, my panels. And again, this bit is not, I can't say, you know, you've definitely got to have this amount of space at the top and the bottom. All I would say is whatever space you have at the top, try and aim to have the same amount of kind of space at the bottom and stick the top panel and the bottom panel on first that is a definite because it is so much easier to stick that middle panel once you've got the top and the bottom in place so a bit of glue on there hold it together and the wonderful thing we always say this don't we about tombow this gorgeous tombow glue is that you have a few seconds wiggle room so if you don't get it spot on straight away you've got a few seconds to move the paper around and find your place for it okay now i pre-cut out some of these gorgeous florals and i think I'm, I'm my heart is being pulled towards these gorgeous purples so look i've, I've got a bit of a um 
that one was at the side of a paper so um, I, that's why it's sort of half half there so I'm actually just going to cut that out because it's it's just worrying me of how I'm going to cover it up so I just think if I just put that there and then actually I might even cut that out there we go I haven't even got to think about it too much if I do that and then I can cover it that up with another flower there and then I can stick that flower there there we go gorgeous you sticking out there maybe a little bit more and you can stick these down with dimensionals if you would like to but before you do I would just give the leaves if there are any leaves on here a little bit of a I don't know what the word term is I'm just kind of running my nail over it just to give that a little bit of a curl up and then um, I'm just doing that on that little leaf there because I want these to look a little bit, you know, a little bit of life in them. Not that they're all flat and, you know, just paper. Give a little bit of life. So I'm just going to use some of these black dimensionals. And you know what? I think I'm just going to do this and then come back to you. Save you having to watch me do this. Oop. So I've got my dimensionals already on the back to stick down. So I'm going to just kind of place that one in the middle there. Now, the thing to remember also is that when you're doing your decor on the front piece, they shouldn't protrude from the sides here. Because if they do, you're in danger of it not fitting in the envelope. Right, so for the sentiment, I just use the same base colour, stamped on there and fussy cut it and stuck it on. And it just so happens, look, I've got this little panel here. I wonder if I can get a little sentiment onto there. So I'm going to go with a bit of Blackberry Bliss so that it will really pop and just stamp for a very happy birthday. Let's see if we can fit it onto that panel there. I love using up my scraps. <laughs> so this stamp comes from Beautifully Happy, another freebie in celebration. It's a bit of a double whammy stamp set. There's quite a lot in it. So it's uh, when you spend £90, you can get that one for free. So I like to just do a little bit of fussy cutting around my sentiment there. And this just helps for it to kind of show up well by stamping a dark sentiment onto a lighter piece of card. And it also kind of like matches in with, you know, the card base. Oh, I forgot to com forget, completely forgot to cut that. Get you around here. There we go. Get you there. And I wonder if I can find a piece of ribbon. I'm kind of running out of my ribbons at the moment, but oh, I do have that gorgeous soft seafoam one. I used so much of this last year that I had to order another another reel of it. I love it love it so much and with ribbon I find that good old glue dots are your friend for this I'm just gonna cut that so whatever angle I cut at the top I cut the bottom and then I'm going to use my glue dots to do this on and I kind of suggest that you put your sentiment uh, where the flowers kind of collide all of them kind of collide because you tend to have a bit of a boring point of that there so I tend to just hide hide that with the ribbon and the sentiment so I'm just gonna do a little bit of a ziggy zaggy you know, the classic ribbon zigzag behind the sentiment which I've seen lots of people do probably got a little bit too much there but that's fine you always cut a bit off and then I'm thinking a little dimensional on the back so I'd love to see what you guys come up with now currently I'm talking to this is um, this is Tuesday that I'm filming this and I'm still locked out of Facebook <laughs> 
um, but hopefully, hopefully not too so long soon, um, I'll be able to get back on and see your gorgeous creations. Now, I don't know if you actually are able to have access to Artful Stamp and Space because I created it. And with me being locked out at the moment, I'm not sure if you do have access. So, I don't know. I'm wondering whether I need to find a, a new platform. Right. Da, da, da. Just going to give that a little bit of a snip. Love it. Oh, it's so funny. I've just looked up at my computer screen and gone, oh, I can't see myself. I've just realised that's because you're not live, Ruth. You're recording this. I haven't even got my computer on. Right, lovelies. So I hope this was a bit of inspiration for you. Oh my goodness. Can I just say, I love that colour scheme. That dark purple with the dark green. Isn't that lush? Oh, go on. Now, don't tell me you're not going to... There we go. That's it. Oh, I hate it when that happens. When you design something, you go, oh, no, it doesn't stand up. Uh, no, it does. It really does stand up. It's just that my um my grid paper is a bit wiggly. Right. There we go. That's how it stands. And um, super fun. Super easy to make. Go forth and make cards, everybody. Thank you so much for popping in and seeing the video. And I hope you've all on the live have had a chance to say hello to each other in the live chat. But if you're catching this video later on, then uh, thank you so much for stopping by. And I've just realised I want to add some gemmage. Where's my gems? Where's my gems? Oh, my goodness. Right, I'm going to have to find those and come back and put them on because I've just realised I've got gems there and I haven't got them on here. Yay, found them. So these are in the new mini catalogue. I can't even remember what they're called, but they are so stunning. And look, I've, I took them to class and obviously people love them. So um, they've got used up quite a bit, but they are absolutely fabulous. Very luxurious looking. I'm just going to pop, pop a few. Oh, no, wrong one. No, 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 no. I don't know what. Let's put you over here. Um... This, this, this one's got kind of like bluey tones to it, but they're all like quite iridescent. And this is kind of like a calypso corally sort of colour. And then this is, oh, I don't know, it's kind of got elements of peach. It's got like a little bit of iridescent blue in it. They are just really luxurious looking. So there we go. A touch of luxury to any card. So there we go. I'm saying goodbye now. I really am saying goodbye now. And I will put a list of the papers that I used and the colours uh, for the two cards so that if you do want to copy them, you can do. Right. Lots of love to you all. Take care for now and see you all soon. Bye.